Well, it's a foggy morning in the Wrangell, Alaska shipyards, and I wanted to take this chance to show you my little MVP on the project here inside this little case here behind me. You'd think I might have my lunch in here or something, but actually what I've got is the little blue box that could. It's a Miller 161S stick welder and it comes in this sweet little case and I actually originally bought it for taking on our other boat, the White Eagle. I wanted a really small, compact, good stick welder that I could leave on the boat all the time for emergency repairs and small projects and I wanted it in a nice case a little spray on it, a little rain or whatever, keep it safe and dry. Let me show you how this all fits in here. So, got the welder right there. Got our ground clamp. Right there. Got our stick electrode holder right there. And then 220 plug and 110 plug. Yeah, just like a normal house plug. You can literally just plug this thing into the wall in your kitchen, no problem. And it's got this carrying strap, so you can actually just throw it over your shoulder and like, I don't know, be a traveling gypsy welder or something. So, here we go, that's what's in the case. All fits in there pretty easy. Super small, light, 13 pounds. It's like nothing. I'm gonna show you how long the cords are so I've laid it all out here with the tape measure. Got starting at zero, so if you plug this thing into your outlet, you got about eight feet, well, seven feet to the back of the machine, eight feet to the front, and you got your ground clamp. is up here, 18 feet, so your ground clamp reaches about 10 feet, and then your electrode is up here at 21 feet, and that's reaching about 13 feet from the box itself. So, if you're on a small boat, heck, you could reach all the way from the cockpit to the bow. Doesn't get me super far on the gypsy, but luckily it's just an extension cord and I have found I don't really need to move it around. It's enough reach that I can weld in a spot for a day, sometimes more, without having to <clears throat> move any cables or anything. Here's where I'm setting up shop today. Got some more Hull repair welding to do. A little foggy out, but it's not raining yet, so hopefully we'll be able to get the work done today. Got some uh, pretty big divots I want to weld. I'm pretty much done work welding on the chine. Still a little bit more to do. I got my 220 plug over here ready to go. <clears throat> Just plug my 220 cord into the back. Boom. Plug that in here. And then got my ground clamp and my electrode. That's my electrode. I'm welding electrode positive. And here's the ground clamp. I just got a little tab welded on for my clamp. Another nice thing about this welder is how easy it is. You got one button, turn it on. Starts up very quick and it's very quiet, which is nice. Normal OCV. And here's your amperage knob, it's just this dial. I was doing um, eighth inch rod last night at uh, 87 amps, but just dial this thing up and down, that's it. And it's got a mode for 6010. And to switch into that, so I'm burning 6011 most recently. Just push the button, now you're in 6010 mode. And back to uh, 6011 or 7018 or whatever you got. Has a few really nice features. It's got a hot start. So I've been burning this 330 seconds rod all the way down at like 65 amps sometimes, which you know can be pretty sticky when you start off but this thing puts a bunch more amperage out, I think at the very beginning and gives you a hotter start, works great. It's also got a stuck rod feature, uh, <laughs> which if you've done any welding, you pretty quickly learn about um, sticking, sticking your rod, especially at startup, and it turns off the 
current when it senses a stuck rod so you're not melting your rod stuck in one spot. I started on this last gypsy welding project. I had borrowed a friend's uh, big gas generator welder. I figured I needed the power <clears throat> for such a big project. This is an 80 foot steel boat with a lot of welding. And um, I, I honestly, sorry little buddy, I know. I didn't really believe this tiny little thing could do the job. I mean, look at it, 13 pounds. Doesn't weigh hardly anything, it's tiny. I knew it was a good welder, but it just seemed out of proportion for this project. Well, when we had to take a month break from the project, came back, got started again. It was late one evening. I was so eager to start welding. I pulled out the little Max Star, started welding on the bow of the boat, and just couldn't believe it. The thing was welding, beautiful puddle. I was doing overhead, 6011 and 6010. Really nice arc control, and here I am almost to the stern of the boat today where I'm welding, and I haven't looked back. I love this thing, it sits there perfectly quiet, ready to go whenever I want. It's not yelling at me when I got thinking about what I'm gonna do. And it's the duty cycle on it, it's awesome. Here we go, I'll show you the specs on it. So plugged into 120, it'll do uh, 20 to 90 amps, and 30% duty cycle at 90 amps, 60% at 75 amps, and 100% at 60 amps. That's just on 120. If you switch it over to 240, you get uh, 20 to 160 amp range, and 20% duty cycle at 160 amps, 100% duty cycle at 110 amps. So for eighth inch rod, like I'm running, it's basically 100%. And these ratings too, my understanding is that they are at 104 degrees. Trust me, it's not 104, thank God here. One button, turn it on, one dial, set it. It's telling me exactly what it's at, 65 amps. None of this confusing range one, range two stuff. So I love it. It's been an awesome tool for the job. Super small, super light, super portable, super quiet, and all the power I need for what I'm doing here.